Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 1989 IMO, problem number three. This is a very cool come to talks problem. I seriously try this problem out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 45 minutes to an hour, not more than two and a half hours. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, give this problem a go for the next 15 minutes. And now without further ado, let's begin. So let's look at this problem. So we have points in S, N of these points in S, some points in a plane, bam, 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 bam. No three of them are on the same line. So, and we have, like that's the first condition. The second condition is that, this is actually the interesting condition. For every point P that's in S, so for every point P, there exist at least K points which are equidistant from P. Okay, so there's like some circle, say this one. Say there's, say k is 4, and this is true for every point p, and we must, we must prove that k is less than a half plus the square root of 2n. Now, if you've done competitive mathematics before, problems like this, this is a very weird number, right? It's just like the square root of a half plus the square root of 2n. This feels a bit strange. And one way of thinking about this is, okay, let's see what, ha what happens if it's the opposite. Like, what is this trying to avoid? Like, what sort of estimate is a, like, leads us to a contradiction? And for me, like, one way of thinking about this is, well, k times k minus 1 over 2, then. This is like k choose 2. For whatever reason, could be useful, could not be. Then this, why k times k minus 1? Because then this is... The square root of 2n plus a half, and then the square root of 2n minus a half, and then it's a difference of squares, these cancel out, and this would be greater than or equal to. So the square root of 2n is like 2n, and we have minus a fourth over 2, and then this would be equal to n minus an eighth. So, and this would seem to be a contradiction in some way, right? This is what the problem is sort of hinting at that this is a contradiction. Why is it? Why am I looking at it? Why is this nice to me? Well, it's nice because I have k choose two, and I have m. And in all likelihood, what I think is going to happen is we're going to prove something along these lines: that n needs to be greater than k choose two, and from there on we will be able to say that k is needs to be less than a half plus the square root of 2n. That seems like one way that we could be going about this. And mind you, given this an integer, this is this implies that k choose 2 is greater than or equal to n. So this seems like the most likely scenario for what it is we're going to be trying to prove. Maybe in fact even strictly greater than or greater than or equal to. I'm not sure at this point just yet. But it seems like a good sort of plausible thing for us to prove. Now, a question for us is, how do we make sense of these numbers? N and K choose two. And this is looking at a problem combinatorially, big picture, take everything in. And this is why this type of problem might be more difficult to some people. It's definitely difficult to me, these types of problems, which are global combinatorics problems, meaning you look at things that happen around all the problem. And it seems like sometimes you're missing out on stuff when you're doing that. But here I invite you to pause for 10 to 15 minutes and try to do just that. Look at a plot problem globally. Can you find some quantity maybe that, that these two things estimate in two different ways? And now's your time to pause. And here's the next step. So what we have here is for every point P, we can think of it having a some circle, right? With points on it, at least K points on it which are, yeah, these are then that makes them equidistant for, from P. So for every point P, we have some circle C of P, such that it has at least K points. Now a question is like, what can we sort of count, like look at the problem globally? And one thing we can look at is try to see, so if, given this condition, we must use it somehow. And one way of using it is to count, okay, how many points do we have that are 
of the same distance from P. Okay, that just gives us something from P. But to get this K choose 2, well, K choose 2 is, gives us like pairs of points on this circle. And it makes sense to then pick a look at points such that PA is equal to PB. So actually triplets of points PAB such that PA is equal to PB. And if we want to get sort of K choose 2 and look at this thing whole globally, then it makes sense to count one. I invite you to pause for two minutes and figure out what would you count here. For me, I would count the total number of these triplets, P, A, and B, such that P, A is P, B. On one hand, let's call this number T, the number of these triplets. On one hand, we have that this number T is going to be at least K choose 2 times N. And here's why. K choose 2, like for every point P, we're going to have at least two, like K choose 2 pairs of A and B that are equidistant to it. So that gives us this estimate on T, right? Now can we get some upper bound on T? So this gave us like an at least how many points do we have for every P? Can we get this in some other way? And to get this in some other way, here's a little bit of a hint, we would need to get N, right? And we would not only need to, be, we would need to get N times maybe N minus one over two. Okay, so how can we do that? I might just pause for three minutes and think about it. And here's how. Well, for every two pairs of points A and B, how many points can be equidistant from A and B? Okay, have, have the same distance to A as they do to B. And the answer is two at most. Because if you have like some Q and R, if QA was QB and RA was RB, then you would have P, Q, and R would be on the side by sector of AB. But no free points from S lie on the same line. And this is how you can generally use this condition, like when you're, I mean, in this problem specifically, but you need to figure out how you're going to use this condition that no free points you lie on the same line. And this is how we can use it here. So this gives us that T is going to be at most what? Well, choose these two pairs and choose two. And then for every single one of these pairs, we can have two points P, right? Technically, technically speaking, this is N times N minus one, and this is K times K minus one. It's the same thing, different way of writing. Like we get the same inequality is what matters. And now with this sort of inequality, I invite you to pause for 10 minutes and try to see where these two inequalities, this being greater than or equal to T, because T is at most this, and it's at least this. See what happens when you combine inequalities, and here's what happens. So we have this, we have T is less than or equal to N choose two times two, and is greater than or equal to N times K choose two. Now this translates to K times K minus one times N is less than or equal to N times N minus one times two. These two cancel out. And now we get k times k minus 1 over 2 plus 1 is less than or equal to n. And from here, we can we can finish this problem up by saying, assume the contrary, assume k is greater than or equal to a half plus the square root of 2n. And then when we plug that in here, we will get that this is then greater than or equal to. So this will be then a half minus a half, so this will be then greater than or equal to 2n minus 1 eighth over 2 plus, a half, plus 1, which will then be equal to n. So it's going to be plus 1 minus a fourth, n plus 3 quarters. And this leads us to a contradiction. So this means what? This means that this assumption was false, like what we assume was false, it's actually not true. And so we know that k needs to be less than a half plus the square root of 2n. Alternatively, 
we could have also solved this problem right here, as the, or this one right here, this inequality. We could have looked at this as a quadratic equation in k and figured out, okay, this quadratic equation is like k squared minus k plus 2 minus n less than or equal to 0. And then what does this mean if this is true for k? What does k need to be? Well, it needs to be between the two zeros. What does that give us? And that can give us this estimate, I believe. And this solves our problem. It's a very cool problem from the IMO. It's the third problem from 1989. It's a, not an easy problem by any stretch of the imagination. Though once you know this technique, and this technique is called double counting, or counting things in two different ways, then this sort of problem falls into place quite quickly because you're looking at the problem globally. The trick here with this problem is not to get stuck with just looking at things locally, like what is happening when I add a point here, when this point moves here or there. And that's, for me, what makes this a difficult problem. And I'll say that there isn't any sort of like general tip for solving combinatorics problems, like a general rule that you can come up with. Maybe there is, I haven't come up with one. But for me, it's a combination of looking at things, you know, bit by bit, what happens when I perturb one thing and like change a little bit something here, a little bit something there, how does the problem interact when n changes, when k changes, like what is changing in the problem? And that seems to be very exact. It seems like you're building like your intuition, you're using some heuristics about the problem to actually solve it. Where sometimes that is very difficult to, sometimes very difficult to use that to solve a problem and you need to look at these global techniques. Which is why I think it's important to practice these and have these like sort of in, the, in your little thumb. Oh, this is minus two, two n. Have these in your little thumb or a little pinky. <laughs> and because then you can sort of try out the global techniques at the beginning of the problem and see if you can sort of finish it right away. And you'll be surprised by how often that actually works. Like even in some recent IMOs, you can, I'm not going to spoil a problem, but you can see things like that work on even the hardest problems at the contest. So this finishes up this problem. It's a cool little problem, gives us what we needed, finishes up the problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.